Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Eternal Flames. My name is Blaze. So, if you've noticed, we got ourselves a very interesting little setup here, and I've been looking at some of the older tutorials, especially for, say, like Terra Firma Craft. For those of you who have played Minecraft, but not Terra Firma Craft, you have no idea the changes that are in store for you. Not only that, but Terra Firma Craft has got some pretty large changes as of recently, which will affect our new series and our new Let's Play. To better allow you guys to either A, follow along, or B, maybe jump in and survive and thrive on your own, here are a set of tutorials that I feel that you guys may enjoy to help you get along in the world. Keep in mind that these tutorials are for beginners or people who just haven't done that specific thing before. If you don't like this particular tutorial, feel free to skip ahead or maybe go back a couple steps. This particular message will be in front of all the tutorials and we heavily encourage you guys to watch them if you want the help. If you feel you want to learn on your own, by all means go try to, or maybe you just don't want to listen to me. In that case, go take a look at the wiki, which we have down in the description below. Hope you guys all enjoy, and I guess uh, we'll see you soon. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. So, last we left off we got done with some cooking, but now we need to kind of preserve our food. So we're going to go over a couple of things that are really going to help you out when you're working with your food to keep it lasting a little bit longer. Unless it ends up decaying kind of like all this. So, how do we go about doing that? Well if you notice I got a bunch of barrels here and I've set up a couple of cooking things on top of my forge. Nice view too, of all the pigs that have gotten free. <laughs> So, what we need is we need salt water, about 9 buckets per barrel. Yes, 9, because you're going to need that last barrel slot for something else. Over here we've got vinegar, but I need to show you how to make vinegar. In order to make vinegar, you need a large piece of fruit. A whole bunch, right? And after you do that, you hit seal. And you can turn alcohol into vinegar. In this case, I'm just using cider because apple on apple, right? So, apple cider vinegar. Hey, it works. Okay, now we take a bucket of vinegar, and we open the UI, drop this in, and it's suddenly brine. Now, what do we use brine for? Well, we use brine to actually kind of keep everything fresh. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do brine, but essentially, I'm going to show you the basic ways to use it. Okay, now that we've got a lot of brine... Well, I'll just kind of stick the bucket in here and leave it alone, right? So, one of the things we can do with brine is we can put basically cooked foods in here. Now, if we put, like, something with a full stack, it's not going to work. If we do half a stack, though, and hit seal, it's brining. If we seal the barrel again after this thing's been brined, what will happen is it'll damn near keep forever since it's already pre-cooked. But meats don't work the same way as vegetables, right? So let's go ahead and brine up some pork. And we'll go from there. There we go. Yeah, meat works a little bit differently. Now to kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on, essentially we're pickling, right? We're, we're pickling our food as best we can. Now this is going to take a little while, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to another piece of this tutorial string yeah I said string how do you get string well you could kill a spider but in this case we're using wool how do you do wool well you're gonna need some wool that you've gotten from your sheep either ones that you have tamed enough that they're willing to let you shear them or maybe you got it from some sheepskin that you murdered some sheep for in which case take your wool take your spindle and boom lots and lots of string now, a little bit later, we can actually turn this into something else, but for the time being, this is all we really need. Now, in between these two pieces above our little fire pits, we want to right click and blammo. We now have a smoke rack. Now, this is going to take a little while, like I said, so time, set, day. And brined pork. Seems about accurate, right? So let's go ahead and stick these up on here. Oh, look at that. Mmm. 
delicious. But we don't just want brined pork, we want smoked pork. Oh, look at that, it's brined and uh, set to go. If we unseal and just leave this sealed, this vegetable will actually hold damn near indefinitely. Now, I mentioned salt, right? If not, I apologize, but we're gonna need salt. For that, you need some rock salt and a hammer. Or at least I believed it was some rock salt and a hammer. Huh. I guess we actually have to grind it up. So, what we want to do is we want to go down here, go to our little grindstone, toss this in. Ah, there we go. Yep, there's our salt. So now we can take our brined pork, and we can add some salt to it. Now it's brined salted pork. Oh man, you're talking some salty, salty stuff now. Oof. But, we're not quite done yet. So, if we go and we let this sit, it will um, it'll actually dry, and we'll have dried pork. But, if we take this right here, and we take this salted pork, right? Let's go ahead and salt this as well, just so we can get a comparison. Brine salted pork, and then that's just brine pork. Let's go ahead and actually smoke this. Now how do we smoke it? Easy. We get a full rack of logs, we come up here, and we're gonna light one of these fire pits on. There we go, and there we go. So what's happening now is the wood is burning, right? And it's smoking this delicious, delicious meat. Oh yeah. In the meantime, our veggies, holding firm. So let's go ahead and skip some time again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. Oh man, I've been sitting here for like the past hour. So here's something I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Now, I did manage to smoke this, okay? And there is a bit of decay, but we can always, you know, cut that off. Boom. So, now we've got salted, smoked, dried pork. This stuff is going to hold up really, really well. I, I mean, it's almost not going to decay. So, you can keep this forever. And can you eat it? Well, not really, actually. Matter of fact, if you can see, I'm right-clicking and I'm getting nothing. So, you want to cook it just before you eat it. And the moment you cook it, it's going to remove that dried stas effect. So, right now it's smoked dried pork. Okay. So, right now we can't do much. And if you notice, it's got like a little black string. I don't understand that one. I think it's a broken texture. But if we go over here to these, we've got dried pork. And we got salted dried pork. Now, if you look at the dried pork, it's already decayed faster than a salted dried pork. So, right there is a definite difference. Like, right off the bat. So, yeah. I mean, that is a thing. And let's just cut off all the rot. So, yeah. Here's our different stuff. It took me a little while, and there's just no physical change. However, for the sake of argument, right? I'm going to show you guys what happens after you cook it. So, we'll pop a log in here. We'll drop this in. And we'll just put our we'll, we'll put our dried pork because I don't want to waste the good stuff, you know. We'll open this up, and now this should keep for a good long time, along with my sandwich. But watch as it cooks. Right now it's just warm, right? And after a little while, it's going to actually cook, and that dried stas effect is actually going to go away, which is sad. But we can still salt it. You can salt and brine pork after it's cooked, but the dry stas effect, you can't cook it yet. Oh, there we go. And cooked pork rare. Yep, there goes our dried stas effect. So after you cook it, it will not hold up as well. So that is a thing, and that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. Aside from that, brining is definitely a way to preserve, because if you notice, this thing, compared to the other food, hasn't budged at all. And we still got plenty of brine to really mess around with. I mean, we, we seriously got a decent amount. And it's just salt, water, and vinegar. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. 
Hopefully, you'll be able to preserve your foods a bit longer and... Yeah, I know using a barrel to just hold on to one or two pieces of food, maybe not the best, but hey, you know, if the food holds, those cold, long winters are going to be a little bit nicer on you, right? Okay, well that's going to be it for me for now. You guys stay safe and stay well, and I'll see you guys next time. If you really like this tutorial, hit like. If you don't, hit dislike. And if you want to check out more, check out our channel where we've got an actual playlist for this stuff. Bye. I like my salty pork products.